Hello, my name is Alistair and in this video I'm going to introduce our R package HIST mapper which we've created to digitize historical land use maps in a quick and quite easy way. So instead of uh, showing you what goes on in the actual R environment, I think it'd be more illustrative just to show graphically what it is that happens and why. And, and then there's code at the bottom and if you want to look in more detail at the functions and their arguments, you can look at the at the paper, you can look at the help files of the functions uh, if you download the package, and then you can also have a go on an example script which you can download from Figshare and go through things more slowly and carefully. So this is the map we're going to digitize. It's uh, the economic map of Sweden, um, one map sheet from southern Sweden that was made in the 1940s. So here we have an aerial photograph and they, what they've done is they've then coloured this in uh, in yellow in the arable land. So you have arable in yellow. Darker areas are forest where there's trees, and the lighter areas are the open areas. And we just import this using raster's stack function. And then the first function in the hist mapper package is smooth map. So because of uh, map age or the scanning quality or something else, there can be quite a large variation in the in the map colors within each uh, land use parcel. And so we want to try and smooth those out, which uh, will make classification a bit easier when it's going to happen automatically. And then um, common to all maps, you have text and boundaries and other landmarks in black, and these aren't actually land use categories. So we want to kind of get rid of these. So the first thing that the smooth map does is it removes uh, the dark areas that you don't want to upset your classification. And then it applies a smoothing function to even out the colors within uh, locally by taking the mean RGB values. So that looks a lot nicer. Uh, even if all the text and all the boundaries haven't disappeared, it's a lot better than it was and it will really facilitate the, the classification later. And then once you've got your smooth map then you use the second function which is click sample and that is basically you tell the environment what colors each land use category has. So you, what you want to do is you want to get a range of each, uh, of each category so 10 clicks is usually good for each category take the, in this case it's the arable land, so we take the darkest arables and the brightest yellows and some of the palest yellows and you take a, a range from across the whole map. Same with the open areas, you take the very lightest areas and that are open, the very darkest areas that we still think are open and a range from across the map. And then with forest, the same thing, we've got the darkest forest here and the lighter areas that we still think are forest and a range from across the map. So we haven't um, selected any any um, water here, so we have the coastline that I'm following here with the mouse. Um, we found in many types of uh, historical map that water isn't always denoted in a way that uh, means that you can actually separate them from from the R from other categories using RGB values. In this case, you can see it looks quite lo a, lo a lot like forest, but we'll get back to that in a minute. So once you've clicked your last click, you get a nice um, plot here that shows you uh, the categories that you've clicked. So the um, first column we have here is the arable land. We have the, the minimum RGB combination we've clicked here, the darkest colors and then the lightest at the bottom. Same with the open areas, the darkest at the top, the lightest at the bottom, and then the forest, darkest to lightest. And what it also creates is a table, um, and this is basically the actual values, the maximum, minimum, mean, standard deviation and standard error of the R values, the B, G values and the B values for each land use category. And that's what we actually need for the next uh, function, so we create, we assign that to its own object. So then we get to the actual classification, the class map function. So we take our smooth map, we take our color table and you can see if you're observant that this looks a bit different from the one in the previous page and that's because even if you tried your best you probably didn't click in the very extreme values of each land use category so what you can do is you can expand the range of each um, land
land use category by a certain amount of standard errors. And then the third uh, picture I've got here is a question mark, and that's because as well as um, not clicking in the full range of each category, there's going to be some pixels in the map that don't fall within any category. And we want to tell uh, the function which category should we assign those to. And so what you do first is you test um, by plotting, so you get a nice plot which shows you the original map, it shows you which pixels will become arable, which will become open, which will become forest, and which will become unclassed. So unclassed could be these exceptions if you choose not to assign them to a class, but in this case it's just the uh, kind of map frame because the map's a bit skewed and there's pixels which aren't actually part of the map, so they become unclassed. So once you think this looks quite good, like we do here, then you can actually save the raster and then you can open it in a desktop GIS program to look a bit more carefully and also to overlay it onto the original map and see how it looks. And in this case we think, well this looks pretty good. The yellows seem to match up with the arable land here, the darker areas are covered with our green forest and the lighter areas are this open lighter area, a lighter colour that we've chosen. Um, so that looks good, but as we said earlier, uh, water not always uh, denoted quite well. So here we've got a nice big forest in the middle of the Baltic Sea, which we don't want. So what we do is we use the GDAL utils func uh, package, which has GDAL rasterize, which you can use to take a shape file of contemporary water that we downloaded ours from the Swedish mapping agency um, to kind of burn a an additional category of water onto our existing map and that looks like that so you can see now we've got the coastline and a couple of lakes and you can overlay that onto the original map and match it up and then we can say that looks a lot better we've got our four land use categories so just to recap we take our input map we smooth it which uh, involves both taking away the text and the uh, land boundaries as much as we can and then smoothing over those we then tell uh, the environment which uh, RGB values actually exist within each map category we then classify our map and if we need to then we can add water separately so um, we think that we can save a lot of time by using this um, these functions but uh, even just on one map but what we think the real strength is that when you have a lot of maps that look the same like we do here you can actually use a loop or send uh, send the arguments to a computer cluster to just use the same color table the same exceptions um, and the same error values or arguments when classifying the maps over a large amount of maps and that's what we did so we split up the southern Sweden into into counties and within our group we we took it upon ourselves to digitize this whole area and this is something we wouldn't have done at all if we couldn't do it in this kind of semi-automatic way so we really hope that um, people can use our our methods uh, to digitize their own maps and we hope that uh, this video is helpful too and if you want more details then yes there's the paper you can read you can download the package using the instructions that you can find on github and then there's um, example scripts and example maps plus all the maps we've actually digitized also at figshare so thanks very much and get in touch if you need any help